Okay, so cheers. Cheers, Emma. Hey, and I just want to put this on the record. I am so privileged and so honored to be doing this with you. I've always loved you because you're my daughter, but it's kind of the human being that you've become. This is super fun, and I appreciate all the talent and skills that you bring to this, and uh, I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity together. So cheers. I love you. Uh, Letty.com and uh, Lucha, and uh, here we go. So, um, All right, all right, all right. So welcome back to the Hidden Pearls podcast. This is episode number two. My name is Emma Kittle, and I am joined by the fabulous Bruce Kittle. Um, we have quite, quite the lineup of things today, um, so let's get right into it. Um, okay, so one of the things that we really wanted to do is to break up different segments into our show. So we already kind of have that, but uh, we have some more segments to bring to you guys. So the first one that we're going to be doing is called the Mindful Minute. Um, a big part of what we both do and believe in is mindfulness. And so we really want to share some different components to that and also the processes that we take our clients through. So we want to share that with you guys. Um, next part is going to be quote corner because if you know Bruce, Bruce loves. We like quotes. We love quotes. <laughs> like I don't, there's, we love quotes. There's a lot of smart people out there and they said some really cool things. And so we don't always have to recreate the wheel. So just. Right. Every week, we're just going to bring That's a you quote in. right there. Yeah. You don't have to recreate the wheel. Yeah, so we're just going to bring <laughs> you some stuff that we use, that we find is inspiring and motivational and all that kind of stuff, and just share it and just some thoughts about it. So we want to bring that to you as well. For sure. And then within our George interview, uh, we have a bunch of different segments, and there are a few different ways for fans to get involved. So excited about that, excited that George is on board, and was actually really excited when we pitched the ideas to him. So make sure to listen to that, and I will have all the extra information in the show notes. Yes. So uh, get involved because uh, we, we like having you guys in. So uh, next thing, just uh, to our charity focus. So after uh, we've got the interview with George coming up here in just a minute, uh, then our charity focus this week. And as you guys know, the Hidden Pearls is about finding those stories. Uh, and this week we are really, really blessed. So we are um, focusing on the Brooklyn Community Services out in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we have uh, two speakers from there. So we interviewed Janelle Ferris. She's the executive director and president. And I will just say, if you skip around to anything, that is one section you do not want to miss because she is on fire and drops wisdom pearls all over the place and uh, is really an amazing woman. So um, I would definitely encourage you to get that. And then, as you know, also, we'd like to talk to somebody who's kind of been in that client stage. And we are really, really blessed. A uh, very talented young man, Owain McLeod. And uh, he graduated from the Brooklyn High School for Leadership and Community Development, which is a partnership between... Uh, BCS and the um, Brooklyn Community Schools, and so they're working together on that. But just an amazing young man, and tells a great story about not giving up. He was an immigrant at 12 and had to overcome quite a few things, including high school bullying and all that. So, great segment there. So, anyway, really... And his quote at the end, man. Yeah, he just kind of goes off. Like, the very last part of the show it's is like, like... It's like Rocky. I yeah, mean, he's, he's just, just like, wait, I have something to say. Right, I gotta let... It, so he just anyway. had to let it out, yeah. so... So anyway, invite you guys to stay for that, because the both of them are just on fire. It was really, really good, and so feel gr just great about those pieces. Very thankful, very thankful. Um, and so we wanted to show, like we said, uh, Bruce, make sure you're standing up nice and tall. So our t-shirts today, obviously, we are very passionate about getting out the vote. Make sure you're getting voted to register, or registered to vote. Register to vote. Um, the t-shirts that we're wearing tonight are, they're from a socially and environmentally conscious brand called Midheaven uh, Denim. And it's by Catherine Brolin. Uh, she's married to Josh Brolin, the actor. And so they are donating a portion. Josh, Josh don't text me after the show, okay? I'm, not, I'm way too busy for you right now, so it's all good. <laughs> Big fans. <laughs> um, but they are donating a portion of the t-shirt sales to Rock the Vote. Um, and special shout out to our family friend and one of our favorite photographers, Brian Bowen Smith, for getting these t-shirts Get on our radar. Um, they're fabulous t-shirts. They're super soft and the artwork is amazing. So, so make sure. So vote, anyway, wear uh, conscious t-shirts anyway. environment. Wait. And last thing I want to say about this brand, um, one of the other reasons why we love this. So I'm five eleven. Claire is six foot. Jan is six. Wait, Jan's six. She's a little Just tall. Jan's the tallest. Okay. Either way, I'm the shortest person in our family, but I'm pretty freaking tall. And, uh, they have regular size jeans too, but Catherine is very, very tall. And so she is, she has designed a lot of 
clothing and especially jeans denim for tall women so if you are as tall as lanky as our family is make sure to check this out if you need another option long leggy women yes and then just on the vote if you get yourself registered let's and just encourage everybody to help one other person so if you think there's somebody in your neighborhood your community your family who's not registered help one other person register and if you've got the time think about helping get the vote out so just, you know, do those things because it's going to come up and uh, it's important and every vote does count. Every voter counts. So let's let everybody do their part to uh, take part in this democratic process. So uh, before we get into uh, our interview with George here coming up in just a second, uh, we just want to acknowledge something that happened this week and follow up with it. So as you know, the Cardinals and Niners played this last weekend and um uh, obviously, we were disappointed in that, but the Cardinals came out with the victory, and uh, it is what it is. And so now moving on 0-1 over to the Jets, and we'll get into that with our interview with George. But um, during that game, uh, Buda Baker, who's a clear rival of George's, he's a secondary player and a really, really good player, came out in 217, same year as Georgie did. And so every year they play each other, and it's an incredible competition, very talented player. So... Uh, Buddha came up, made a tackle on George, uh, had a situation where George was up in the air and kind of clipped him and, and a uh, very clean tackle, no issues there whatsoever, just playing good, clean, hard-nosed football. Anyway, and so uh, George kind of banged up his knee a little bit with that. And after that, we had a purported Niner fan come out um, and DM'd Buddha directly, I think, versus via Twitter. But anyway, some very racially derogatory comments. Um, and so we tried to respond to that. The Niners have come out, and we'll throw a, a clip of that statement from the Niners up. But I guess we just want to make sure. So as you know, the Hidden Pearls podcast is about trying to look at and identify issues around social and, and environmental injustice. And obviously, with the NFL this year, it's a huge issue. Uh, they're wearing T-shirts beforehand about end racism. It's all over, um, both on the helmets, it's on the field, the it's field, everywhere. everywhere. So, so it's an ongoing dialogue. And so for this to happen in the context of that whole thing, uh, one, we just, again, we, we offer apologies from the Niner family uh, to Buddha and his family and to the Cardinals for that happening, uh, and uh, certainly not anything that we would condone, and certainly we do not. And we just ask everybody to kind of check your kind of meters a little bit and take a look, and because that's not the kind of thing that's going to get us where we all want to go. So um, we have to find a way to come together to be united, accept people you know, for who they are. Hopefully they accept us for who we are and we can live together and work together to make the kind of world that we all want. So, uh, Buddha, if you're listening, which hope you are, but if you're not, <laughs> you know, you might not be, I get it. It's kind of a Niner thing, but anyway, our heart goes out to you and really to, it just, and it's really impressed upon us, you know, the frequency with which this thing happens and kind of cyber bullying and how people hide behind social media and that whole thing. So that's a whole nother conversation, but Anyway, let's all take a stand, and, and later when we Em and I do the Mindful Minute, there's a little visualization that we're asking people to do, and just really, you know, search your heart, think about how we can work on this, and let's truly work on ending racism as we move forward uh, to make a stronger stronger community, stronger society, and hopefully a stronger America. So, And I just want to, um, something that, shout out to our fabulous mother, Jan. Um, God, this makes me like, tear, ugh. Hard to say. Um, something that she always crying like five minutes in, man. Uh, something that our mom has always, always stressed to us was the power of our words. Oh, yeah. And I think in social media, uh, we have this fake facade of thinking that um, you can say whatever you want and you can reach out to people in ways then that there's no consequences. And so, like we said, cyberbullying uh, is terrible. It's dangerous. It's evil. It's nasty. And it's very, very real. And so um, just remember that your words have power. And whether you're being sarcastic or joking, like obviously those comments were not sarcastic or joking, but just know that COVID presented a world that is so disconnected and so distraught and it brought up a lot of pain and that's hopefully something that I want to cover on this podcast is the mental state of where everybody is now but when you say something and you think that it's this casual comment and that you just are throwing it out there and that you're not really thinking about how accountable you can be for those words like know that 
like you have no idea how that's going to affect somebody or what it's going to do to their day and the direction that it's going to push somebody. And so please, please just be mindful of your words, be mindful of the things you put on social media, but mind, be mindful how you interact with people and be kind to other people. And so like dad said, we have a meditation later on in the segment. And I really, really hope and encourage you to do that and to visualize the type of person, the type of world, the type of environment that you want to be in and the person that you want to be. So, um, so, so let's yeah. be, let's be kind. <laughs> really. So if what you're going to send doesn't lift somebody up it, and it's okay to disagree, but we can do so in a way that still honors the humanity of the person. So anyway, all right. So Whew, let's take a drink to that one, man. Yeah. Well, we're pretty clear where we're at. And, um, Anyway, we appreciate you guys being along for the ride, and uh, we look forward to it. Take a stand, man. Let's go. We have a great show for you today, so... um, With uh, that being said... Let's talk to George. Let's get our favorite 49er on. All right. Thank you. George, welcome to the show again. Great to have you here, man. We are so happy to see you, and you've got your little fluffy friend. Diener, what's up, girl? I wish you could hear. What's up, guys? Oh, Oh, that's intense. Wow. Well, wow. Very, wow. very, very cool. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Hey, you know, real quick, shout out to, well, first off, thank you so much for having me on again, guys. You're welcome. Glad that I, you know, the fans liked me enough for you guys to bring me back. So I am now a two time guest or, you know, maybe even a co host. I'm not sure yet. We're working on the details. Yes. But I just want to say thank you so much to you guys for the new equipment from new headphones a new speaker so i'm actually professional look at that wow yeah wow wow and i even got another stand but it's really heavy and i'm not gonna lift it up yet so thank you guys first episode was was a was a success yes we're almost episode two on to episode two Mm. i mean you look great with the headphones thank you do you like my tank top Yeah. yeah they didn't have stone cold headphones so i got you joker headphones oh Thank you. The purple is actually my first choice as well. So thank you so much for that. Welcome. You're yeah. welcome. Like I said, all right, everybody. Uh, George, we've actually been referring to you as our talent. Oh, yeah. You like that? Well, I don't, you guys you don't pay co-host? me. So yeah, <laughs> you right. don't pay me. So I'm not your talent. Uh, okay. Let's go, be, let's go co-host and we'll split all proceeds with it. I love it. Yeah. Guys, we oh, put Dane to sleep already. Dude. Yeah. Dude, Dane is going crazy. I, she, he knows something's up. He All does. right. Anyway, Bean, I uh, love the attitude. Cheers, George, to you, uh, to week two. Cheers. Cheers. Love you. Love All you guys right, as let's well. let's dive right in. So uh, first thing we want to talk about is our new podcast studio. So uh, mm. George, thank you for being so fabulous at football and collecting all of these jerseys, all of these memories. I know we said we were going to talk about um, artwork of George, but uh, we figured we'd switch it out for all the jerseys you've re- collected over the last couple of years. So we thought we might step back a little bit and um, maybe let you talk about one or two of them. I would love call to. some stuff out. Yeah. Sure. First, you guys, move yeah, our heads. Yeah. Let's just wiggle all the way. Emma, can you go to your left a little bit? Go in front of Rob so I can see who's behind you. Who's behind me? Who- Oh, yeah, who's behind you? So it's Evans and Ooh. then your Pro Bowl jersey. Oh, Let's about Clay. Yeah, Claiborne. Oh. Awesome. I do have a great wall of jerseys. There's actually a lot more. They're not showing at all of them. I got some fun ones. But, you know, I try to trade with tight ends whenever I uh, play someone that I know. Um, the Kelsey sent me that one for Christmas. Um, and what was that? 2018. So that was pretty awesome. Great message on that. Uh, can't wait to actually get it, like, framed in a glass frame. This will do for now, though. Uh, you got, you know, Robbie T, who's one of my best friends. He's actually a groomsman in my, my wedding uh, for the Packers. Love that jersey. My guy right next to him, Skid Ellis, is another guy I train with. He's my dog. Absolutely incredible human being who is the best vibe of all time. And then uh, top row, yeah, I got Mitch Trubisky. We were locker buddies at the Pro Bowl in 2018, so that was really fun. We traded jerseys there. Uh, Christian is a friend I met through Nike. Um, so that was kind of fun just because I've – admired him as a football player for a long time. He's always been incredible, especially in college. I think he had 800,000 yards against Iowa in the Rose Bowl as a part of that game. <clears throat> um, but, you know, me and him have become friends and hang out, so it's uh, pretty fun. And then, you know, good old Bobby Wagner right there, uh, absolute savage. Uh, get to play against him, you know, twice a year, and he's the man, so I wanted his jersey, so I asked him for it. Bruce. And I got lots of other jerseys. Maybe I could touch on a couple every week, tell a story about each jersey. 
That'd be really good. That'd be great. I can't tell if we just made this backwards or not, but... No, it's T. There's Kelsey right there. This is so going to mess me up. Now. We're on opposite sides. Yeah, so we're on opposite sides, but... The, you guys are doing great. At least the jerseys are right. <laughs> okay. Okay. That was so confusing. Um, all right, so we don't have any... Uh, right? No, we don't have any Cardinals jerseys, uh, but let's talk about the Cardinals game. Oh, wow. Yes, let's... Uh, obviously, you know, game that turned out the way we wanted it to, uh, we couldn't get it done in the end. And I mean, honestly, I don't want to sound cliche or cheesy, but it was more of a, we didn't really play a team game that, that week. Um, from whenever the offense, you know, we started off really hot. Um, then we didn't do well on, well, let's just, or when our offense was doing well, our defense special teams might've done great. Or when they were doing great, the offense didn't kick it in. So we did not work together very well. Um, as an offense, you know, we didn't move the ball at all in the third quarter. We were really bad on third downs, hard to win games. And so, um, you know, but luckily, you know, there are 15 games left, so we have plenty of time. You know, we have a great team. I thought we had a really good camp and just got to get the ball rolling. And, you know, once you get a little bit of momentum, it all starts going from there. Um, you know, interesting trip, we know we get to play, uh, the jets this week, which will be really exciting and fun. They got, uh, the boys are you know, going to the East coast. Um, the only other time I've been in MetLife Stadium, WrestleMania. So that was pretty fun. Bruce, hey. you were there with me. Yeah, great time. Uh, <clears throat> that was a great that one. That was when so uh, cool. right next to us, the Miz uh, took Shane McMahon off the top of a scaffolding. Yep. That was pretty cool. Was right, right I mean, like us. right next to us. Literally, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was really fun. That was really so cool. So MetLife Stadium, that will be really cool um, to see football in there <laughs> instead of WrestleMania. <laughs> but, um, you know, and the Jets will be a fun matchup for us as well. They do some really crazy stuff on defense with some Tampa, with some Tampa two stuff, and um, the corners are super aggressive. And you know, they do um, they do a lot of different stuff. And on offense, you know, Sam Darnold is another guy I know through Nike, and he's a good dude, and he's also a hell of a quarterback. You know, he's got the he's kind of a baller, and so he can make some crazy throws, and, um, and he's got guys that can make the play. So um, it'll be fun to see that game go. I'm really excited for. Uh, our defense just uh, uh, you know, play more, you know, Arizona has a different offense. They have yeah. an um, insane quarterback that can kind of do it all. And so you have to play differently against someone like that. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, playing uh, more of a normal offense, I think the defense is going to have their ears pinned back and have some fun. So that's yeah. my opinion of that. Um, <clears throat> but I'm really looking forward to it. And then, Hey, after that, we go to West Virginia for a week. Right. Practice right. So you're football. staying on the East coast for two weeks. I know it's crazy. Ten days. It's Aww. wild. Hey, Dini. Sorry for boring you. Oh, there you are. She keeps looking. Yeah, she's just gonna miss you. <laughs> I know she knows I'm leaving. I'm so sorry, baby. Hey, uh, George. Just on. Sorry. Uh, just in general. I know. I mean, this was a loss like that, but you know, just the process within the team. I know is. Um, I'm sure you know you watched it with your position coach and all that, but like on a team perspective, how do you guys as a team? I'm just kind of in general for fans' knowledge, like you know. Do you guys watch – I mean, you don't watch the whole game together. I mean, how how, do, how does Coach Shanahan communicate with you after either a win or a loss? But, I mean, this one was a loss, you know, about things to work on and all that kind of stuff. I mean, is it – I know it's all week, but how, how, what's, yeah. what's the process for you guys to do that? Uh, well, you know, on Mondays we have uh, a team meeting, you know, win or loss, and we um, – Coach Shanahan, he either – there have been times where he doesn't show any tape, um, and there are times that he shows almost every player the whole game. It's just – and he reads the team and, you know, he feels whatever he's comfortable to do. Okay. Um, but like we showed a lot of plays this week of, um, you know, where, you know, like good and bad plays that were like the big moments of the game or just like how the game went throughout the four quarters. Um, and so like you just get to see, cause you know, I don't watch every defensive snap, you know, I'm either talking to my tight ends coach on the sideline. So, you know, I'm not like Shannon. I don't remember every single play throughout the entire game, offense, defense and special teams. So um, he kind of just – he tells a story with the plays and how they go on a row, um, and, but it lets you see how other guys are playing. Um, he holds guys accountable. Um, like I – the first third down of the game, it was an easy 10-yard route. I kind of cut it short. I didn't make the first down. So, hey, that's on me probably. I mean, it is. So you have guys that have to be held accountable, um, and I like that a lot. I like that coaching style because, um, you know, whether you're the starting tight end or um, – you know, backup guy in special teams. He's holding guys accountable, and I think that's really good, and that's what you need as a team moving forward. Yeah, and that's probably something people that haven't been in sports or that kind of activity, it's really a different thing. 
Um, mm-hmm. to, to, you know, because you're sitting there with a group of 53, 60, whatever people with coaches plus, and then when you're up there and if Coach Shanahan's actually talking to you about something you didn't do, that can be yeah. pretty uncomfortable. But everybody knows that's part of the game, and it just it's a reality check, so the accountability. So, okay. And then any kind of overriding messages this week from Coach Shanahan, just keep working hard and get better? or Be the most aggressive team on the field. Okay. So was he so. – Okay, so that's kind of the message for the Jets. Well, well, so I want to ask, um, this was your first game without any fans. Can you it tell was. us a little bit yeah. about that and if you got any special messages? Hmm. Um, let's see. Definitely different. Um, I mean, because weirder, than, weirder, than, energy, I, weirder like, than I expected it to be. I mean, it was yeah. just... It, so, fun fact, the Niners have cutouts in the end zones. I think you guys can see yeah, that on TV. Those, yeah, right. We go out for warm-ups, and there's two security guards standing in the cutouts. Like, one's at, like, row three and one's at row ten. Like, to make sure and nobody's going to steal them or what? No. So, so, <laughs> so, we're out there doing a warm-up, and, like, me and Dwelly turn around, we're like, and I literally, because no one's out there. There's And also, there's no music when we went out there to start because the guy hadn't made it to the like the box yet okay. to turn the music on. So, so it's, it's empty and quiet. Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, oh, this is weird. And so I turn around, I'm like, hey, like, I think it was Dwelly asked, he's like, hey, are they, uh, are they going to make sure the cardboard cutouts don't oh, storm the field? <laughs> and I was like, dude. So we asked him, like, hey, like, uh, what are you guys doing up there? And they were like, I have no idea. <laughs> they just told us I to actually, stand here. I saw them in the sands <laughs> on the game. That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I was like, what is going on? Oh, that's oh awesome. my gosh. So that was pretty funny. I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, it's different. Special Learning experience. videos on the scoreboards. Uh, maybe yeah. my personal masterpiece that was released. And then later released by the team. On <laughs> we didn't know. Nobody told so us. So nobody knows who we're talking about now, the whole world's going to know. Sorry, dad, but it's on Twitter. Um, so we were asked by the All 49ers the to create family hype videos for mm. the players. And so the examples they gave were like people being like defense and we just went a little different direction. Shall we say, I, I, I haven't uh, submitted mine yet, but I think you're going to be, uh, equally as surprised. Um, but Bruce put mm. on this Lucha mask and danced uh, to some DMX, which is a normal thing. For yeah. Me. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a normal. That's like, actually a Thursday normal night. day in the neighborhood. Yeah, right. And right. George saw it because somebody pointed up at the screen while he was in a huddle mid play and said, "Dude, isn't that your dad?" It was during a, yeah, it was a TV timeout. TV timeout. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I was like, "Holy, hey, Dad, what's up, man?" And the uh, the link to that will be in the show notes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. All right. Great. Maybe we should just put it on our Instagram. I mean, now that it's out there. I think you should. It's a great touch. Okay. Well, let's, uh, we'll talk Jets just a little bit. I know, um, let's just, so, so last week they lost to the Bills 27 to 17. Bills obviously are a very good team and another team that you will see soon enough. Uh, Sam Darnold threw for 215 yards, but he was sacked three times. Talk into this a little bit more. And kind of struggled. Uh, mm-hmm. Rushing, they really struggled, although they think they're going to be good. That's what they were talking. But our good friend Frank Gore, longtime mm-hmm. Niner and fan favorite, uh, Frank rushed for 24 yards. They had a total of 15 yard, or 52 yards rushing, so mm-hmm. kind of a tough day for them that way. Um, and then defensively, uh, Bills passed for 312. They looked pretty good. And they had uh, just under 100 yards rushing. So not a great day for the Jets, you know, coming out and trying to get that done. So I don't know. Anything else you want to add to that? I mean, obviously, it's a road trip. You guys are used to doing that, but still first one of the year and all those kind of things are there. So anything about the Jets or special challenges when going all the way across the coast like that? Besides um, being away from your ladies. I mean, it is a challenge, you know, to go across all the, the time zones. Um, but what I love is that we travel on Fridays. Um, and so it gives your body an extra day to kind of get used to it. So instead of, you know, landing in New York on Saturday night, you got to wake up and play a game, especially like if you have an early kickoff, that's really tough. Cause like the early kickoff on the East coast is a 10 AM game for us back here, right. which is insane. So um, the fact that um, we get an extra day just to kind of get, a, get to bed at a good time. Uh, I love that. I love that. It gives you a little bit of time to settle. Um, but I mean, it, it is different because playing at 10 AM is weird. It just New York, they do it on football. Um, and then I like plane trips. I do. It's fun. It's just time to kind of relax and forget about stuff, watch a good movie, get some extra studying in, whatever you want to do. 
but I mean, it's different this year because last year, my uh, for the last three years, my uh, partner in the row was uh, Garrett Selleck. Oh, so, right. gonna miss him. <clears throat> who's your but, who's your travel buddy now? Um, I don't know. I, they sent us texts about like where we're sitting and stuff, but I never check it. I just kind of like it to be a surprise. Oh, okay. But yeah, I last year was Selleck. I think week. one year was. Perfect. I think my rookie year might have been Trent. That was fun too. Oh, oh hey, oh. Trent Taylor was back on the field. Trent Taylor was back. Oh my gosh, field. watching him catch that first uh, kickoff punt. Never, punt. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's heart was fluttering. That was really exciting. Yeah. I'm super stoked for Trent. I'm excited for him. So yeah, good to have him. He's going to continually get better and better and better. So it's going to be sick. Yeah, and hopefully Trent will be on the podcast within the next couple of weeks. So y'all will really get to meet him. Shh. Don't give away your guests. Cool. Okay, so we have an exciting new segment coming up on the podcast. Um, actually, a lot of you guys have been asking for this, so we're pretty hyped that George is hyped about it as well. So we want to talk about fashion. Ooh. Obviously, uh, Georgie, also, can we just talk about, was today Arm Farm? Every day is Arm Farm, baby. <laughs> or a tank just for you guys. Well, that's it's so actually, sad. Claire picked it out, so yeah. I don't say no. As you shouldn't. That's all. No. That's all really, really good. So let's so. talk a little bit about what you wore to the first game. Mm. Are you gonna like throw a photo of me up with it on? That'd be cool. I will do that. Yeah. yeah. I will YouTube how to do that. And you came. Yeah, there's a, you're there's walking a video. In, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. No. There's a great one because yeah, yeah. You came walking in with old uh, Nikki. Right? Yeah, Nick's my. Yeah, fun fact on game days, I either ride over because I only have one car out here, and Claire gets it. Um, I either ride to the game <laughs> with uh, Bosa or Jimmy G or Trent. Okay. Trent was in my last year, so that's on him. But okay, great. <laughs> so dripping in Nike. Um, so what? So dripping in Nike. Do you have the shoes that we could take a look? Oh, at? I do. Um, the Grateful Dead. These are fun. Ooh. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, Any special features? Can we get a little closer to the screen so we can see the I will. I'm going to set one down. Oh, okay. 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 So here we go. Here we go. Beautiful. Sneakerhead. Swag there on it. Yeah. It's good. Dad, it's yeah, kind that's of brutal. It, it looks fluffy. Dad's like, it is, swag. It is fluffy. Oh, look at that. They're super comfy. Yeah. They're the lows. I like these. They're fun. They already got three. They got two other colors. On well, the inside of the shoe is pretty sick too. Mm. Oh. Look at that. Little bears in there. Uh, dancing bears. Aww. So that's, some happy that's really cool. Yeah. Um, those are the shoes. I went with um, some, it was like a tie dye Nike shirt too. That was awesome. Um, that's usually my fit. It's usually Nike t-shirts or wrestling shirts, but my main focus is shoes. And I'll, I'll bring on like a pair of shoes each week for you guys. Cause yeah, I love shoes. You can ask my family about it. It's yes. probably the only thing I actually spend money on. For that, That's not true. Um, for <laughs> for, on that. for um, I remember so for Super Bowl last year we're sitting around it's like I mean like right before I'm helping you guys you and Claire pack and um, I mean we're also packing up the entire apartment because after that we're coming back to Nashville and I'm sitting on the floor and, or I was like helping Claire do something and it's like a little bit frantic and George is like Emma you have to relace these shoes I'm gonna wear them to the Super Bowl and it was like I mean, it was a task. I, I think I did a pretty good job. I was I was actually really proud of them when I saw them and saw you walking yeah. out. I was like. Shoes, shoes do remember, matter. Do you remember what shoes they were? Uh, they were the red ones. Yeah. Chicago off-whites. Chicago off-whites. Beautiful. The, the Volt green laces. Yeah. I like the green laces. Those are sick. Mm-hmm. Vol- I'll Vol- bring those on too. Okay. Those were, those were fun shoes. I, that was actually the only time I've ever worn those. Crazy. Oh. Okay. Mm. All right. You got some fresh laces, brah. They do have some. They're, they're still pretty new. Yeah. It's funny. So Jordan Reed, um, he had a Jordan deal. And so he wears all these Jordan shoes that are like very, very nice Jordans. And he just wears them every, like every single day. Like there's, like he has the same pair of shoes that the unions is what they're called. The Jordan one unions. And he wears them every day. And I'm, I've worn mine twice, I think. Cause I'm just like, oh, they're too pretty. I just don't even feel like wearing them. Uh. Players. You might have to show us what those actually look like because yeah, I you, you might have to do like some of your top fives. So we'll yeah, I'll do bring out a couple pairs of shoes each week. Yeah, shoes shoe, each week. Yeah, a little shoe corner. Okay, all right. Well, well, great. And then, um, and then I guess you really have to plan ahead regarding shoes and t-shirts 
for the when you're on away trips like this this is that's kind of an extra level do. of preparation yeah so um claire helps me with that i always pick out shoes for the ones that i like <clears throat> um but she you know helps with the rest of the outfit it's kind of a fun thing that we do um and like i said a lot of nike shirts wrestling or godzilla shirt last year that was pretty cool probably break that out again um but yeah a lot of guys do suits i'm just not i'm just not a suit guy yeah it's just it's a lot of effort it's important to be authentic and to feel comfortable yeah. so i could do um you know a suit but with shorts but i don't i don't think kyle would let me do that a suit with shorts yeah. I love when you were like your all white one. That was like one of Super my favorite cool. outfits. Yeah. We're not allowed to wear shorts to games. Oh. But I mean, we can, other than, like, that's one of his, own, that and sandals. And other than that, you can do whatever you want. So I think it's pretty relaxed. I'm okay with it. I can't quite imagine you walking into a game with sandals. That would be, that'd be a little different. Bosa would wear short, like lifting shorts and Birkenstocks if he could. Aww. <laughs> love some Birks. Love some Birks. Yeah. Um, well, great. Any other things about fashion or shoes I mean, or t-shirts or whatever? No, I'm pretty good. And then, okay. So again, Emma's going to announce the last segment uh, that we're adding to the show. So go ahead on that, Emma. Um, okay. So something that we thought would be a fun way for our audience to interact with George um, is if we started a segment called Ask George, where people can write in and talk to George, ask questions. Um, and so the way that we're going to do that, exactly, brother. Um, the way that we're going to be doing that is by, uh, so our website, thunderbirdperformance.com. If you go to the con the connect page and then you can write in, in the subject, there is an option where you can click on it and it'll say, ask George. So if you click on that and then you write, dear George, or whatever you want to say, make sure that you uh, say your question, make sure that you tell us where you're from, tell us your name, include your Instagram handle, and then uh, we're going to go through and pick three to five questions. Um, but yeah, so thunderbirdperformance.com, I'll have that linked in the show notes. And yeah, George is right now, I don't know if it's going to show on our Zoom screen, but he's uh, flashing some tennis shoes. So if you're a sneakerhead and you have some questions about that, anything else, Georgie? Maybe just puppy updates? <laughs> If you guys want a Dini, a, a Dini's Den, we can do that. Too. Oh yeah, Dini's Den. Yeah, info on Dini. Yeah. Uh, Dini's fluffy. She's sleeping right now. Um, she's waiting for me to either a give her food or b give her pets. And she so likes, I'm going to go with b because I don't have any food on me right now. All right, she likes me pets. So, well, George, thank you so much. I know during the week, especially in season, is really tough on you, and so we appreciate the time that you spent and having a conversation with us on that. And uh, safe travels. We'll stay in touch. And so next time we'll be recording during the Giants week next week. Ooh. And so you'll be in West Virginia at some point. And so I will be. Yeah. So we'll be following up with you at that point. So we love you very, very much. And thank you about you every single day and wish you the very best. And so again, appreciate you spending time with us. Mom's over there waving and she says hi and that she loves you too. So it's all good. Hey, so, mom. All right. Any other uh, closing comments there, Amy? Nah. Thank you, Georgie. Um, Great session. Thank you so much. That was really fun. Thank you, guys. It was really fun. Great to see you. Okay. Take, take care. Can we give, get a give Claire a kiss. What was hey. that? Okay. All right, man. All right. We love you, man. Have a great night. Thank you. See you guys. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. One of our new segments of the podcast is something called the Mindful Minute. Um, as part of our Thunderbird performance, uh, we work with something called uh, MAP, M-A-P, which is Mindful Awareness and Performance. Uh, working with players and or coaches and or other individuals on kind of mental preparation for life. So um, I've got a kind of eight point structure or pathway to mindfulness has eight components to it. And I just want to spend just a brief, just introduce this one because these are all concepts that uh, George and I have worked on and talked about and, and just a part of it. So uh, point one is the uh, conscious awareness. So that seems kind of obvious, but it's uh, and obviously we work on meditation and all those kind of things. But the point about conscious awareness is that we are intentionally uh, taking time to pay attention to our thoughts. And the belief system within that is that thoughts are just thoughts. That's all they are. They don't define us. They, they are not who we are. And we can separate and disavow ourselves from those thoughts. And so part of conscious awareness is recognizing both thoughts and emotions uh, within our context of our life and just seeing them for what they are. 
So if we start to feel angry about something, there's nothing wrong with feeling angry, but it's noting that we are angry and we can choose what we do about that anger. And so it's that awareness, though, that gives us the opportunity to separate from the point of stimulus, whatever happened, to the point of our response. What we don't want to do is react. We want to respond. We want to intentionally choose how to respond. So that's the point of conscious awareness is being aware of our thoughts and emotions and then making deliberate choices about how we want to respond. So the action point for the day. So as I was looking around the world a little bit and thinking about climate change and thinking about uh, George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and everything else that's going on, I wanted to envision a world in a country uh, that was more united. So I'm going to invite you guys to do this. So this is an affirmation process that we use. We combine affirmations and visualizations in our mental prep work. So the affirmations I'd like you guys to write, and we'll put this on the website as well. I'd like you to write three affirmations that start with the word I am. And they don't have to be true. They have to be what you want to be, but write them as if they are true. Manifest. Manifest. So I am strong, healthy, and powerful whatever it may be. I am kind, generous, and courageous, whatever that is. So write two or three of those for you. And then I'm concerned about our collective sense of society and community. So I would ask my all of you that are listening to think about starting three affirmations that start with we are. Think about our society. And it, it may not be true. And I don't want to say likely isn't, but anyway, but envision what you want our society, what culture you want, what values drive us. So we are collectively stronger together than we are divided. We are united. We are compassionate and caring for those who need help, whatever that may look like. So write two or three of the we are's. Okay. And then the last thing is, you know, we're kind of tied to Mother Earth here because she's our ship. And as I think we've posted in other places, there is no planet B right now. This is all we got. So I'd like you to write three affirmations for Mother Earth. And so write out Mother Earth is. She's our home. She's beautiful. She's healthy. Whatever it is. And again, write out the Mother Earth that you want to be. And then what I would ask you to do, and we do this with all our affirmations, spend time as you read those affirmations, actually visualizing in your mind what that affirmation looks like. Create a picture in your mind about it. And our belief is that you create your reality through the projection of the visualizations that you contain in your mind. And by projecting that energy outward, we literally manifest and cause and create into reality what we actually experience. So the I am's, we are, and Mother Earth is. So let's all work on that, and let's uh, visualize our way into the self and the community and the world that we would like to have. Thank you. That one is, I feel like, that like always gives me chills, like that words are, your thoughts are just thoughts. And I was in a yoga class the first time somebody said that to me, and I was going through a really really big life decision not life I mean decision but like big transition and I was in a yoga class and I like exactly remember it but the teacher just said um don't assign meaning to your thoughts and just I was I mean I know you can say something and yes and you can hear something like a thousand times and then sometimes you're just open and ready and receptive enough to hear something and I just I had such an intense emotional reaction because I was hanging on to so many of these thoughts and like feeling so much shame and like remorse and doubt and fear and just like, I mean, shame was just overpowering me and like these ideas that I wanted to have, but I didn't know if I should be having them. But um, it just felt like this insane, like physical, emotional, spiritual, mental release. And I just literally just like laid on my yoga mat and cried and thankfully I was in the corner, but yeah, hot house yoga, man. I'll give a shout out to them every day. That yoga studio in Iowa city and Coralville, Maureen Mondanero. Yeah. Changed a, my life. That's, baby. Our home, that's our home base. So love you guys. Shout out there. So anyway, yeah. So thoughts are just thoughts and emotions, just emotions. And then we, if we can separate ourselves from them. So I often describe it because a lot of the, so the players that I work with, they, they struggle with that. That's hard. Um, and so sometimes it's about, you have to think about being out of body, watching yourself yeah. and you're just kind of, Oh, that dude's having some emotion. And so just, <laughs> you know, and it's you, but you're not, Shit, really, that girl is dealing with yeah. it. She is in it. <laughs> and it's, and it's okay. 
I mean, we all have those uh, emotions. We all have those feelings and that. But it's kind of this, what we call detached interest. Yes. You know, so we are in it. We are interested, obviously, in the outcome of our own lives, but in a way kind of detached from it so we don't get sucked into it and all the drama and all this negativity that can flow from it. And we have choices. And it all comes back to choice. It does. You have a choice and you can make a choice to be the person that you want to be. So we're going to keep talking about that throughout the podcast. So we'll work through. I think another thing that has like really, because doing these affirmations and, you know, I'm sure you've heard people say like, say them in the mirror, write them everywhere. And like, I, you know, whatever works for you is great. But what has really helped me in the morning is I set my alarm 15 minutes earlier and then I lay in bed. And before I get up, before I look at my phone, before anything I think about the person who I want to become. So I might not, I mean, and we make uh, recordings of the affirmations for our players, for our yep. clients. Um, so playing those, you can do that, but also like just, it's kind of like this space of daydreaming. And I think it's really important and really sacred. And if you allow yourself that space to like, just be and think and do whatever you want to do. Like I have such wild ideas and wild dreams because none of the bullshit from the day none of like the weight is holding on to me or like I haven't been met with anything that's going to distract me from like exactly who I want to be and so like having those 15 minutes in the morning and then I do my meditation my sadhana but like I just it's such a sacred space and a sacred practice for me because once I pick up my phone once I check Instagram once I start responding to y'all's messages once I start reading things like that you know, like little things like that, like you're like a little ping pong ball where your energy is just like shifted and you have this moment in the morning or whenever that is for you that you can just like stay with your eyes closed. You can put on some sweet music, like just be in the vibe of manifesting exactly who you want to be. And it's really powerful. And it's like, we're going to hear from uh, Janelle. It's a, uh, that is a gift to have those 15 minutes and to be able to do that. And so I am, I'm going to remember that tomorrow morning. Okay. So in another, just a shout out, let's see, um, recently came out with, uh, compete to create or create to compete. I can't remember which one it is, but anyway, Dr. Michael Gervais, but anyway, in that book, um, they with, just Pete Carroll. with Pete Carroll, really, really good, great listen. So it's on audible. Um, but he gave a morning because they talk a lot about meditation as well. And if that you're struggling with that or just trying to get started, their recommendation, which I think it's just a, it's a three minute exercise in bed before you get out. So as you wake up, two or three really deep breaths, kind of clear your mind and then step two after the breath work. And again, nothing huge, just feel your body in the bed, feel your lungs filling up. And then the next step is think of one or two things that you're grateful for. Uh, and give acknowledgement about that, okay? Because we all have something in our life to be grateful for and an attitude of gratitude certainly is grounding. And then third is uh, set an intention for the day. And the intention is not, doesn't have anything to do with doing. It's just what Emma's talked about. It's about being. Who do you want to be today? I want to be kind. I want to be loving. I want to be patient. Whatever that is for you that day, just, you know, some thing about being. And if you control the thoughts that lead into who you are being, then eventually you become the person you want to be. And then the last thing is just remember, so feet on the ground. So keep your mind and your attention to wherever your feet are. So be present in the moment. And that's really what we just talked about. It kind of brings us full circle to conscious awareness is that if I'm standing here doing a podcast with my daughter, I am consciously aware <laughs> that I have this moment with her and with all of you and to record this. So those are the things. So that's uh, more than a minute. You got your full on the mindful minute. I think we're at about 11. Yeah. Now. So anyway, we'll have to figure out what to do with that. But anyway, <laughs> just wanted but you. But it's you creating your mindful minute. Yes. And you can do that in a minute. Like, and it takes yes. a little bit of prep work and that's fine. But like condense it, use it, like make it into something that means something to you. Yeah. And don't make it hard. Don't you, you know, all of us have different practices when it comes to meditation and that, but it can be very simple. So you don't even have to sit on a pad. You don't have to do anything. Lay in bed. Take one to two minutes and do that uh, little mindful meditation as you get out of bed and just see where it takes you. So And even though none of you asked, but I know you all are going to blow up my phone after this comes out. Uh, we <laughs> are actually in the process. One of our goals for Thunderbird Performance is to record affirmations. So obviously we do that for our clients. Uh, Mr. Robbie T. Robbie T. Robbie back. T. Uh, but we 
are in the process of writing a little bit more general affirmations uh, and recording those and kind of creating. I might release them on our YouTube channel. I might. I'm not quite sure how we're gonna deliver these to you guys. It might just be like a separate. I don't know yet, but um, that's something that we've really been wanting to do, and so you can hear our voice at all hours of the day. Yeah, I'm sure they want that. So anyway, okay. So enough of that. All right. Thank you very much, and that's a wrap. Cut. Okay, so, so um, Bruce Kittle, Emma Kittle, here with you. Uh, we're coming at you with the quote corner. So this segment of the podcast, oh yeah, I like it. Bum, 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 bum. I'm learning how to use all these buttons. Yeah, she's got a little soundboard over there, <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, yeah, as we go on, it'll be more and more interesting. We had a little tool on that baby and some Pearl yeah. Jam. Yeah. So. Oh, when you said your Pearl Jam quote, I could have played a little. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to splice it. Maybe. Oh, my. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, quote corner. So, one of the other things as part of the mindful awareness and performance I really like to do is when we do affirmations, hey. I put them on sheets of paper and then I laminate them. So, I'm a big laminator and I like to make stuff in the size of a credit card and then I send it out to guys I work with and then they have it and they can put it places and they can see these things. And so we do affirmations that way and then we do quotes. So I really like that. And so we put the, so this quote corner is just a little, just a little nibble, you know, something to think about because we believe in the power of these words. Uh, and there's so many inspirational people that have come before us, uh, have done so much great work and said so many great things. So we won't try to get into too much of that, but this one again, is on, you know, working toward being successful uh, in whatever area of life you're working. So the quote I have for today, and I'm, honestly, I went back, I tried to, I put it and Googled it and all that, and I couldn't, no, it didn't ever come up with who said it. The first time I heard it was um, uh, with George Mumford, who runs something called The Mindful Athlete. Uh, George was, he wrote a book called The Mindful Athlete. It's a great book. I would encourage it if you're interested in that stuff. If you guys watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan uh, over quarantine, this is the Buddhist teacher, George Mumford is, who yeah. worked with the Bulls. Which, that documentary cut most of that out. They never really acknowledged. They didn't want to mess with it. But anyway, George but was in that, but he was with the Bulls and then with Michael fire. Jackson and then he was with the Lakers and all that. Michael a lot of Jordan. success. Michael Jordan. Super big Michael on Jordan. mindfulness. Anyway, um, so this is the first place I heard him. This is who I heard Maybe say Maybe Michael Jackson though. Okay. Yeah. Jeez, crackers. All right. Uh, anyway, so the, here's the quote. And this is one that, this was kind of the theme here at the old, uh, the Kittle Ranch here um, for the summer. So, but anyway, small, consistent steps all taken in the same direction lead to amazing results. So I'll say that again, small, consistent steps all taken in the same direction lead to amazing results. So kind of the point of that for us is if, if you have some kind of goal that you're working toward, whatever that is, break it down into the little tiny steps and, and just think about the very first thing you can do that moves you in that direction, whatever it is, doesn't have to be very big. But if you take small, consistent te steps and just kind of keep putting one foot in front of the other, it's you know, we're, we're big mountain climbers here. We love the 14ers in Colorado and that. And all you do, you don't have to take big steps. You don't have to run. You don't have to hurdle. You just put one foot in front of the other. And sometimes it's only six, eight inches at a time when it's steep, obviously. So don't put a lot of pressure on yourself and just take little steps. And if you just keep doing it and you know where you're going and you've got a clear goal and you keep taking the steps that go that direction over time, it leads to amazing results. We can't always see that in the moment, but if we just stick with it, amazing things can happen. So that's kind of the quote for the corner quote for the day or quote corner or whatever it is. But anyway, so just think about that and uh, we'll post that out there too. And I don't know, I'll try to, and George probably won't return my text. I don't have his cell number, but anyway. But anyway, um, I'll hit him up on his he's YouTube. He's a big deal. He's got a big, um, he's got a great channel on YouTube at home with George. He's been working through the COVID. It's really good. But anyway, um, oh George Mumford, yeah George Mumford. Uh, but anyway, I don't know. He'll probably know exactly. He's great at remembering quotes. And George, yeah. I'm, oh, I'm I'm not very good at it. But anyway, but this quote is on our mirror in the gym yeah. that we train in, and every time it was so cool. Like George, our George, is the way that he attacks something. It's like it's so holistic. Like he uses his mind, his voice, he says the affirmation. So yeah. there was this day, right? We're in the gym yeah. and he's squatting. And so Josh Cuthbert is there. Uh, Claire and I are in there. Um, and I think it was just the four of us. Lady set go, baby. Um, 
but I think it was just the four of us and George had was like max squatting or something and you he like was trying to get like I mean he always does get really hyped but every time he would before doing it he'd turn and look at the mirror and he would read it and say it out loud and say it to himself and breathe it in and then go and take on a set and if I mean actually I'm assuming that Probably none of you have ever seen George front squat. <laughs> it is <laughs> it's insane. Amazing. It is yeah. insane. He is. Yeah. Wow. Like the power there. Like if y'all front squat and you really get into it and you know the mechanics and how hard it is to do that. Like it's my favorite thing to watch him do. Yeah. He's doing front squat. like 450 easy. You know what I mean? So it's incredible what he does. But anyway, aside from him, we don't poo-poo on George poo-poo. Yeah, but anyway. But we I would just say, though, and so the mind, the thoughts feed into all the rest, and then we take action based on those things. So anyway, small, consistent steps, all taken in the same direction, lead to amazing results. So here's to you guys having an amazing week um, and taking those small little steps that take you. And there, are, there's no step too small. There's no step too small, so don't, don't worry about that. Just get started. That's all there is to it. So anyway, thanks for joining us in the Quote Corner with the Hidden Pearls podcast with Emma Kittle and myself, and uh, we hope you have a very inspiring week. Thank you. And cut. Action. Okay. Episode two. Hi, Bruce Kittle and uh, Emma Kittle here on uh, the Hidden Pearls podcast. And we are continuing with the show today, and uh, we're very, very thrilled with our uh, charity focus. So again, uh, this is week two of the NFL season, and the Niners are off to uh, New York, playing the Jets, the New York Jets. And okay. it, it, and this is our uh, practice. We've uh, contacted the Jets, and they have uh, shared with us some of the partnerships they have out in the community. And our charity focus this week is the Brooklyn Community Services and so we're very fortunate to have Janelle Ferris with us, who is their, let me get it right, executive director and president. So I'm going to ask you later what the difference is and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, we're very, very excited to have her here with us. So uh, thrilled with all that. So we're going to give you a little background on the organization, uh, and then we'll kind of get into that interview. So again, Janelle, thank you very much for being here. And Emma, you can kind of do a little backup. Hi, Janelle. Thank you so much. Hi. Um, so a little background on BCS. Uh, the vision is that BCS envisions one Brooklyn community where everyone can realize their full potential. And their mission statement is, our mission is to empower children, youth, adults, and families to overcome the obstacles they face. So when we were on your website, we really couldn't find something that you didn't do. Um, <laughs> no. It was pretty amazing. So just to list them off, uh, early childhood education, after school education, youth development programs, family services, workforce development, mental health and wellness, community living and life skills programs for adults with intellectual disabilities and or mental health concerns, health and wellness programs, supportive housing and other shelter, and adult basic education, ESOL. So uh, that was a list of 10. Yeah, so uh, pretty incredible stuff there. So that's covering a lot of ground. So yeah, the English is a second language in that. So just a little bit about um, Janelle, because I think it's really fascinating. And the, the podcast is called Hidden Pearls. And it's partly about the people, the you know, the clients who take services and that and understanding their stories so we can understand them more fully. And then recognizing the organizations and all the work they do. But Janelle, I will say, I feel like you're one of our hidden pearls as well, because the people that commit themselves with such dedication and love in the way that you clearly have is really fascinating to us. And so anyway, just, you know, all gratitude and respect for all the things that you've done. So um, Janelle became director, executive director and president in 2018, uh, began working for BCS as chief operating officer in 2013. They're responsible for program management, human resources and some kind of office program relocation. So I'm sure there was a lot to that. A uh, lot of experience in the nonprofit world, Pratt Center for Community Development for nine years as associate director and responsible for operations. Before that, worked with Common Ground as director of the largest single occupancy supportive housing facility in the country, which seems daunting, so that's amazing. <laughs> so, and education, and I, I think this is where people, you know, people that are kind of in public service like you are in, in the nonprofit world, people underestimate how hard people work to be prepared, how professional people are, and so I just want to give you recognition for that too, and a lot of your staff, because we looked at them. Uh, bachelor's degree in psychology from Spelman College, master's degree in public administration from that 
kind of small school over in the corner, Harvard University. And then January 2013, postmaster certificate in organizational development from the new school for, I'm sorry, the New York School for Social Engagement. Did I get that right? Is that right? You did. Okay. So anyway, so wow. So really, really cool. And uh, again, we're so really grateful about you being here with us. So um, I before we got on air, I said something about executive director, president, and CEO, and all that kind of stuff. So you're like the most powerful person in Brooklyn. You must be because you're the executive <laughs> director and president. But so uh, tell us just a little bit about what what are those roles and kind of what what do you do within the organization? So the executive director is the one who uh, is like the, the the quarterback on the team oh, and right. is uh, uh, making the plays. You know, okay. making sure that we move the ball down the field. And then the president is the one who is working with the board of directors, fiduciary responsibility, making sure that we carry out our vision. So I am my own boss, oh. uh, along with 22 board members, uh, keeping myself uh, point in, in pointed in the right direction okay. and guiding the ship. Very good. Okay. Got enough al- analogies in one. In one <laughs> yeah, it's great. No, we were all over that. We love it. That's well done. All right. So, I, you know, I guess with someone, you know, with the level of education the, and your lifelong commitment to this kind of work, can you just tell us a little bit about what, what drew you into kind of public service or nonprofit work? And, you know, what is your passion? And, you know, how did all this get going for you? Well, I'm an African-American, somebody whose family goes back generations in America working for the betterment of community. You know, I come from a long line of, of, of people from carpenters and electricians to teachers and uh, doctors and even uh, a judge. Um, right. We were raised to believe that the work we do needs to make a difference in community because it's not enough for one of or two of us to make it. We won't be successful as a society if we don't all advance. And so that's my dedicated mission for life. Yeah. Uh, I think of myself as a, as, as a social justice warrior, somebody who has been dedicated to the betterment of, of mankind and in particularly uh, African American people, yeah. because that are that is who I am, sure. and uh, it is uh, important uh, to look at all of the underserved in this country. And so, uh, I am very proud to have this opportunity to uh, lead my magnificent team of staff right. as we uh, try and make a difference. Okay. Well, it's very inspiring, just your whole career in life and, and that. So um, very much appreciate that and those pieces. So which, so this whole thing about kind of unity and working together because it you know takes a village and all that pieces. And so the vision for BCS is that you guys envision a one Brooklyn community where everyone can realize their full potential. So uh, I'm, we're all kind of paying attention to the world around us right now. 220 has been really difficult. And unity and togetherness seem to be words and kind of a sense of community that is really difficult to find right now. Everything feels really divisive. But it sounds like from that vision, you guys see that in the future for Brooklyn. So just can you say a little bit more, and maybe you've touched on it at all, but I just that notion about unity and that we're strong, to me, I'm putting my words on that, that we are stronger together, you know, when we respect diversity and differences, and even within the context of those differences, when we come together to work toward common goals for the betterment of our entire community, we can achieve a lot more than when we're on our own. So tell me a little bit about your vision for Brooklyn, about unity and people reaching their potential. Sure. You know, the BCS was founded just after the Civil War, over 154 years ago, and it was started by people of means looking out their window and recognizing that their neighbors were suffering. People whose family members were killed in the war, people who came back and were handicapped, children, orphans, what could they do? And they got together and they built a structure to 
provide services for their neighbors. That's one Brooklyn. Today, you know, COVID has shown a light, a light that with blinding ferocity on inequity. It's just clear. You can see it by who's dying. You can see it by who's out of a job. You can see it by the difficulty that we're having recovering and that we will have down the road. So uh, I may have forgotten your question. Well, you were talking but actually about BZ, unity and the vision, yeah, about people, but you've, you're right on point. You're doing great, yeah. BZS uh, envisions a place where there's a nexus between people who have and people who don't and that we provide a platform for people to achieve their greatest potential. And what does that mean? You know, you and I, we have this luxury, this luxury that we don't think about. It's a privilege every day to get up and say, hmm, this is what I think I'm gonna do. To look at your skills and to know that you could make a podcast that people will listen to is a luxury. You can't. Look at your skills and think about what you want to do if you're hungry. You can't do it if you don't have a home. You can't do it if you have those things, but you're not certain that you'll have them tomorrow because you don't know where your next dime is coming from. Then you're just in survival mode. If your family's living in a shelter and you don't know if it's safe for your child to go to school the next day, you don't have time to think about what your gifts are and how to use them. People need an opportunity to have the luxury to be self-determinant. And unfortunately in this country, it is now a luxury. It wasn't always that way and it doesn't have to be that way tomorrow, but today it is. And so I see one Brooklyn is a moment when we are all able to self-determine our future with real choices, not choices like, oh, I get to send my kid to a mediocre school or nothing. Right. Our systems need to support our ability to be self-determinant and to use the gifts that we're born with to our best and highest potential. And in that way, we will be in an unstoppable borough, an unstoppable city. May I say an unstoppable country, yeah. but we've lost sight. We've, we've lost sight. And we've lost all the um, skills, abilities, talents, and resources, all of those, the people kind of left behind they have within them, but can't offer because like you said, they're in that survival mode. I really like that notion that, you know, if we can get to a certain point for people and those other things have leveled off and they have some security and they know there's some kind of certainty within their lives, that notion that now I can do some self-determination, make choices, but this thing about, God, what do I want to study in college or what training? I mean, you can't even get there when all you're worried about is your next meal and where you're sleeping tonight. So, and, and, and the choices that you have need to be good ones. Yeah. You know, if you are changing the way that people can get into coding school these days, it used to be, you have to have a lot of money and 14 weeks free. What well, you can't do that. If you have children, yep. can't do that. If you worry about the rent, you can do it. If you live at mom and dad's house, that limits who will be the coders of the future when every company in the United States will need to have a coding department soon. Yeah. What are we doing? What are we shaping? What, how do we prepare for an equitable future? So everybody's got a equal shot to work toward that coding, but it, they can't get there if the system is set up to limit immediately and auto in. automatically about who even fits in and gets through the door. So, well, exactly. okay. So we'll probably come back to this notion a little bit today, but anyway, so then your mission statement, our mission is to empower children, youth, adults, and families to overcome the obstacles they face. So I just, I'm really drawn to that world of word of empowerment. And, and I think you've already 
you know, raising from working on kind of the baseline needs of life into that role where you can be self-determinant. But tell us a little bit about your vision of what does empowerment mean and how does BCS bring that to people? Empowerment means different things to everyone. And so one of the things that we do when we're, we're working with people is really find out where are you? What, what is going on in your life and what are your needs and what are your visions for your life? You know, you really work on creating a plan that meets the needs of the person where they are, right? So it's different. One family uh, moved into an apartment and has three kids in school and no place for them to do their homework. Empowerment for them means a, a dining room table and a couple computers. With that, their children can go. Their family can thrive. It's that simple. Families right now in our borough, all, all children need to be in viral, edu- in viral. Uh, <laughs> in, 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 Sometimes it is viral, right? Education. Yeah. I know, yeah. Okay, yeah. Virtual <laughs> education. But what if you don't have internet? What if the internet is when mom comes home and has brings the cell phone at midnight at the end of her shift? Empowerment for that family is a hot spot. Yeah. Helping people doesn't have to be, you know, what some would have you believe, handouts. You know, giving a family internet access is almost a right these days yeah. because you can't compete without one. Exactly. You can't compete without it. Yep. So empowerment is having choice of do I do coding school or training for maintenance? Do I... Could I be an entrepreneur? What do I have to get to get there? Having the wherewithal to follow your dreams, that's empowerment. Empowerment for someone with a developmental disability who was raised by their parents and now at 30 with aged parents needs to l- live independently. Empowerment is learning how to take the subway and be safe. Empowerment is learning how to live in your first apartment and cook your meals without your parents. For them, that opens a world of opportunity. It's it's different and we need to be aware of that. And as we think about the system that is in place to serve people and cuts and challenges to the system, we have to recognize that uh, we can't one box shop social services because individuals need care. So how do we support a system to address all the needs of the various human beings who need a little extra help to reach the level of self-sufficiency that we need as Americans. You can't do it if you keep cutting services, if you don't support an industry that thrives on government contracts, which they're being cut because of our response to a pandemic. So we need to all recognize that we're going to have to help each other now uh, through, as the overused phrase, unprecedented times. Indeed, yeah. I do appreciate though the, the kind of the, the notion that you made about how unique and diverse the needs are amongst the population that you serve. And also that you know the gap between being kind of self-sufficient or self-determinant, as you noted, for a lot of people and families isn't giant, 
I mean, it's not like, you know, I got to get a college degree or, you know, I mean, you know, for some people that's it, but it's like you said, the internet or maybe a hotspot so that they can run a laptop at home while somebody else is using the phone or doing those kind of things. And so it doesn't always have to be super complex, but those obstacles though, as you noted, when they're not available, it's just like you run into a brick wall and then, you know, it's like the wall's not all that thick, but it's so big and strong. You can't get over it. And then everything else about normal, like you said, so many of us take for granted they can't access. And and that's really what we're trying to do is knock those walls down to make that fair and equal and people have an equitable opportunity to work there. So, well, very good and probably talk for that for a while too. So thank you so much for just kind of touching on that. Well then, um, oh, I'm cutting in and we're chatting a lot. So anyway, so <laughs> Emma's turn now is up. So very good. Thank you. Um, no, but I just, I love the idea of empowerment because even thinking about, I feel like it's really powerful to think about um when you can take those steps, whether you're like in any facet of life, but like taking the subway or figuring out how to cook for yourself, it's like looking at those things as empowering and taking control of your life, I think are really important to do and to keep feeding that energy. Um, so yeah, very, very special work. Um, Janelle, can you please tell us more about your work in BCS and what you guys do? Wow, well, as you, as you noted, we do a lot. And it's, it's very varied and it, it is a model that really is built on responding to the need in the community. You know, why we have services for people living with mental illness. That's why we have services for people living with developmental disability, childcare, uh, high school, uh, programs to support people, as I said, to achieving a level of, 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 of individuality as well as empowerment and, and self-actualization. Uh, we do so many things. It's right. hard for me to drill I, down that was a big for you. Question. Well, oh, I know the because we watch the video and they go, "Well, I know we're over 500 employees now." And I was like, well, "Okay, I don't know how we're, what are we doing with this for <laughs> in a half hour segment." So that's kind of tough. So, well, I don't know. The one I do want to get to just because um, I think former client that you guys have and that we're interviewing as part of our show. Uh, he went to the high school that you guys sponsor. So I, I do want to talk a little bit more about that. But if there's any other programs particularly that you would like to lift up or just share with people that maybe need an extra nudge or something, I mean, that'd be fine. Um, we need another two, three hours for <laughs> I know, that. I know, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, you know, they all can. And and and, and yep. uh, I, will, I will come back to that. But let's talk about the high school. Okay, great. Um, of all all the programs that we have, uh, and, and we have a few, as you've noted, um, many of them have graduations and I'm always happy at graduation time. Uh, and this particular program is my favorite graduation. No offense to other programs, I love you too. Um, because here we have a program, a school for uh, young people who have uh, had significant challenges in graduating from what we might call traditional high schools. Uh, these kids, some of them are homeless repeatedly. Some of them are parents themselves taking care of little ones. Some of them uh, have, have faced severe trauma. Maybe they've uh, been touched by the criminal justice system. All kinds of stories. Uh, each one of them uh, 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 ready for, to, uh, uh, sorry, I'm stuttering. It's all right. Each one of them uh, unique and powerful in its own right. Uh, our high school, uh, BCS provides the social services to support young people as they learn through the classes provided by DOE, the Department of Education. Okay. So we're in a partnership and in each uh, student of which there are about 210 okay. uh, is assigned a case manager who does everything from call them in the morning and say, hey, we need you here today. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get up and go right. to uh, helping them with the myriad of problems that young parents, 
people who've, who've seen more than you and I in a short lifetime uh, must face and the challenges from gang violence uh, to abusive home life. Those are all things that, as we say, are obstacles that you must overcome in order to grow on. And so our staff supports them in a marvelous partnership way where they begin to feel that they are supported enough to be able to do what we talked about, make decisions, learn, think, and graduate. And, graduate. and when they do, it's a tearjerker every year. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see and a sense of accomplishment that everyone deserves in their lives. And the question then becomes, where do we go from yeah. here? And I hope that BCS will be able to help them uh, as we have in, in years past from going to college to trade school, uh, to trade school, to uh, careers. And uh, that's our hope with every graduate. And y'all have a really great video on the high school and the story that we watched yeah. earlier. So I'll make sure to link that with the YouTube video and in the show notes. So if you guys want to watch that or any Thank of the you. other informative things yeah yeah the staff sent us kind of a whole set of links so we're very appreciative of that and just to be clear so i've got brooklyn high school for leadership and community service and community so, development community development or community is it oh, Lord. <laughs> whatever the way i might have written it down wrong because I, I cut and pasted then the last word leadership and community development okay I i'm sorry yeah. so community development so i think and so you said Little, High School for Leadership and Community Development. Okay. Development. <laughs> All right. So very good. So over 200 students, 210, I think you said. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the video did a great job kind of capturing how, um, one, unique the issues were that the students faced, just the same yes. things that you've been talking about. And then two, just the notion of kind of embracing and loving people for who they are and where they are at on their journey. And then again, a lot of times it was, you know, filling that gap. And it's not a lot more than... Hey, we'd love to have you here. We're glad you're here. And then working on new ways to think about problems and that. And as you kind of said too, it's it's hard to think about education or learning if so much of your other life is in chaos or if you're really hungry or you slept on the ground or whatever. So, okay. So we can help them to meet those, to get over those challenges. Yep. Kind of get some stability in their life where they can actually mm -hmm. focus on education and graduation. So, okay. Um, let's see. Then what about, um, and, and so again, the scope of BCS is very large. In your experience, you've been in that community and working for a very long time. So I guess part of the Hidden Pearl work for us, and we addressed a little bit of but is there anything else as far as, are, are there systemic issues in addition to what we've already talked about or other causal factors that lead people you know, into having the obstacles that you guys see all the time? I mean, what's behind the scenes that you see is going on? And then if as you're talking about that, if you guys are involved in or supporting, you know, some responses, whether it's policy or new laws or that, go ahead, please share a little bit about that as well for us. Stick hmm. the systemic issues that lead to the challenges that we as a borough face, you know, were birthed in racism it's true. Not every system do I think uh, was drawn with this brush stroke. It's a cacophony of problems piled onto one another that create the mess we're in. When we look at the education system and how it is funded, we have to be real about the fact that we use our income taxes and it reflects a place-based system that's underfunded in some areas. It's a reality. What are we going to do about it? When we look at housing and the lack of affordability, 
it's a system that has existed for many, many years. And if we look back in the 50s and in the post-war era, redlining, all of it led to the communities that exist today. The devastation of some communities in Brooklyn, in the Bronx, all over the world, you'll see higher instances of asthma. Why? Because the train runs right through it. It's the last place that someone who's worried about clean lungs wants to live, but it's where the affordable housing exists. There's no one brush stroke that will magically cure a system that was not designed to support all of its people. Black people, brown people, people of color are not necessarily well supported by the existing system. So how do we justify and repair? We need to look at what we're doing because what we're doing post COVID seems to be quite a bit of it. Let's get back to normal. Well, what COVID is teaching us is that normal isn't satisfactory. The challenge is how are we gonna agree on what is? And how do we do it in a way that is respectful of all of our citizens? I'm not sure on what the answer is, yeah. but I'll tell you right now, I don't know. Don't know. And it's hard to change. It's hard to consider when it's your child that perhaps not having a swim team so that another school can have computers is the best option for your child. It's the best option for society. These are difficult challenges. So, but we shouldn't let difficult stop us from looking at change. We've done we difficult should. in our history. Right? That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, to say that. So, I guess the one thing I just want to put on the table, too, and just so um, listeners, and we've already kind of talked about this. So, and, and Janelle and I talked about it before. And so, we just went through the Buda Baker. I told her about what happened with George and Buda Baker and that tackle and then the fan and the racist comments that came out about that and um, our response and the Niners' response and all that. So just kind of the reality of the systemic racism. And by that, you know, <clears throat> and I think looking about that, we were talking beforehand, but the post-World War II stuff that came out about the programs that were there to help rebuild the country and put things back in order, um, as you noted, people of color were often either intentionally excluded or, you know, maybe overthought, I don't know, or kind of overlooked, but in, but it resulted in, you know, now 80 years of a system that has been inbred and we're suffering from the results of that. And I and also, I just want to highlight too, because our concern with the podcast is both social injustice as well as environmental injustice and the connection there. The more you look at it is that the people who have done the least to impact the climate tend to be the people who, who suffer the most, suffer the most. And just like you said, so the neighborhoods where nobody wanted the nuclear reactor or the factory or the runoff from the factory or the train or whatever it is, you know, they've been people of color and they've been in those communities. And now we're really seeing that because COVID then has hit them particularly hard. And exactly. not, not just because they had pre-existing conditions, but also because of the way now that we doled out the testing and the responses and then because people couldn't get tested and the number of test locations and all that kind of stuff. And so there's just a whole deep web of those kind of things. But like you said, and let me, let me just point out too, when we look at who's dying from COVID and, and let me be clear, you know, at BCS, uh, we had staff working throughout yeah. this period because we run shelters. 
We run programs where people with disability need assistance 24 hours a day and we provide it. We're just like thousands, millions across America. Yeah. The people who got up and kept going to work tend to be black and brown and people of color. Yeah. And so when you look at the challenge, you know, we have found ways to protect ourselves and our staff are thriving, but this is, these statistics should, they reflect a lack of care. And, you know, on the one hand, it was vital that we support hospitals first, absolutely. But at the same time we were being called essential, we were fighting to find PPE. And I am grateful that the state and the city uh, began pipelines, but we had to find them ourselves. And those are the very people whose lives we say matter. We, we need to, consider all of the citizens that we call essential and treat them as such. And we need to think about the consequences of the decisions long-term that we make in the people who will be affected by them because both sides of the equation matter. It can't always be about the bottom line dollar. Right. I am probably going to get arrested. <laughs> well, I'm a criminal defense lawyer. I'll we'll call and come out and get out of jail. Okay. <laughs> um, well, um, then let me, um, let me, let me shift just a touch. Then yeah, are there, please, uh, oh no, it's great. I really Walk appreciate it. Type rope. No, I appreciate <laughs> your, I know. Thank you so much for those comments and just the insight. And so, and so on the one hand, there are a lot of complexities and it's an interwoven web of causation that we've been building on for a long time. So, granted that. But on the other hand, there are a lot of really good ideas out there and we can't shy away from the hard work because honestly, it's just the right thing to do. And our country is going to suffer if we don't roll up the sleeves, start making acknowledgements about the way the reality is, how it got to this point, and then start doing some work to move in the other direction, whatever that may be. So, so and I think, uh, it, can I just make yeah. a point? It's important that we really support nonprofits, you know, we are the way that governments meet the needs of the underserved. And if the needs of the underserved are not met, the needs of all people are not met. We will see this if we do not ensure that people don't get evicted, if we don't ensure that uh, there is some type of federal intervention right. soon. The numbers of people that are predicted to be evicted or the number of landlords who will go bankrupt yeah. uh, is a problem. And so nonprofits will be there, good or bad, but we can't be there if we don't get paid. Yeah. And right now it's being debated. I don't understand how it can be a question. Nonprofits are needed in order for the city to make it out of this struggle and to debate whether or not we should get paid money that we spent at this moment yeah. is not appropriate. So there are things we can do right now and there's a whole lot of work ahead and nonprofits need to be a part of that discussion and to be a part of of the the solution we will be asked to be a part of the solution and so i hope that uh, uh, we can use uh, all of our voices to make sure that that all of the people we represent 
are part of the planning for a new tomorrow. Well, such a key point that you're making because at the end, you know, you're the one there picking up the pieces a lot of times for bad policy or ignoring certain things. But it's really important that you and your constituency have a seat at the table and not just that you're invited to the table, but that you're given space to actually speak and then, of course, listen to. So really, really important during these times as we, we all really are because as we're hopefully at some point coming out of COVID, there is going to be some restructuring and there's a lot of issues for us to deal with. And if we're rolling up our sleeves, then, you know, one of the principles we, you know, hopefully is mutuality and, and respect and that we can bring people together for that to hear the stories, which is one of the reasons we're doing this is hopefully to lift up some of these concerns and that. So, well, so thank you for those things. So how about then, what would you tell, so people are hearing this, they go, wow, those guys are amazing. And they're going, how can I help? What can I do for BCS over there in Brooklyn? So what, what, what would you tell people as far as either kind of causation and systemic issues and or just getting involved or donating or whatever? So what, what can people do to help? There's so many different ways that people can help um, BCS and Brooklyn in general. Uh, we have a robust volunteer program that uh, will welcome any and all callers. Uh, we work hard to find ways in which people can give of their skills and time uh, that is mutually beneficial so that you feel good about your contribution as well as it's impactful for uh, the people who attend our programs. Of course, uh, making donations to BCS is always a helpful Money still thing. Good, uh, right? We are challenged by the uncertainty of the future. And so in knowing that we have enough to uh, do the things that we need to do to keep uh, an agency as robust as ours uh, going is always helpful. Right. Um, your dollars contribute not only to uh, ensuring that, that people like the families that I spoke of before have the electronic equipment they need to bridge the digital divide to making sure that I have time to be on a talk show with right. you. And, <laughs> Thank um, you very much. Right. Get to learn more about all that. So links, links to the donation page will be on, and we'll add those things to the notes on this. So we'll have kind of informational pieces. And then also if they do want to volunteer or if they do want to make a donation and we'd certainly encourage them to do that as we will be doing as well. So once this is done uh, before the, this weekend, so anything else that you'd like to kind of offer? I or? think I may have, I, I escaped getting my, my, my foot stuck in my mouth already. <laughs> so I think <laughs> you, you were beautiful. So I, <laughs> Thank you I so well, much. I just so appreciate just the candidness cause it's, um, it's almost like in public discourse, we can't have kind of honest conversations about where we've been and what is actually going on in the world. And I know people have different perspectives, but anyway, so we are very, so truly you are one of our hidden pearls. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank and, you. And so is BCS. We're very excited and we're very excited to speak with our guests for tomorrow. So that'll be very enlightening as well. So and folks will hear that. Sorry, we're, we're recording tomorrow. So, but the, he'll be on right after this segment. So we're very, very grateful that you joined us and really appreciate all the things that you do and your commitment and passion to the people of Brooklyn and, and beyond. So Emma, I know I'm just gassing on because she's like kind of twin sister here for me. I'm just really excited to chat with her, but anything else you want to add or a question that we didn't get to? No, I mean, just thank you for coming on and talking to us. And I think, uh, for recognizing the complexities of people and how important it is to see, you know, like living in a challenging situation isn't just hunger and it isn't just time and it's not just work. It's Wi-Fi or a table or there are so many different ways to give back and so many different ways that you can make an impact on a community or a single person's life. So never, ever underestimate the power of generosity and community. So, and just the last point. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. Uh, I love that your father daughter. <laughs> I just lost my father recently, uh, and seeing the two of you work together just does my heart some good. And you got a great father. Just enjoy the hell out of him. Uh, I do. I do. Well, I appreciate that very much. So, so one last plug. Your daughter to be empowered. That's not always what we get. So thank you. That's well, we're working. Good on that. dad. So uh, reminder to everybody to vote if you're hearing this segment. So get out, register. 
go vote, you know, whatever direction that may be, just uh, honor and appreciate the power uh, that you have. So make sure you're doing that. And just an encouragement to um, be kind, love one another, and uh, let's embrace some diversity and find ways to work together. So Janelle, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, this will this will post uh, Saturday afternoon sometime before the game on Sunday with the Niners and the Jets. So thank you very, very much. Any parting words? Or are we good? Um, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. All right. And um, have a good game. Go Jets. Go. Oh, oh, you're killing oh, us. All right. We got to get a Jets jersey up here. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a Jets. We don't have a Jets jersey, so, but maybe. Right. Uh-oh. All, right. Uh-oh. all good. Okay. You take care. Have a super great week. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. Thank okay. You. Bye-bye. Can I just end? Yeah. Yeah, you click it. All right. Good job. Got it. Okay. Good got job. It. Wow. And any closing thoughts that you want to talk about? Um, we went about double what we said we were going to. Yeah. I don't know. We can, um, You know that intro part? We may, I don't know. Maybe we need to not do that and just list it on the website so they do 10 or 12 things. I don't know. Yeah, that was really powerful, though, I thought. Come closer to your microphone. Okay. Well, you moved it down. I had it way up. It's my daughter, though. She's always trying to fix me, straighten my shirt. And then make sure we're looking at the one in the ring, not that. Okay. We got two. I just wanted to see what we look like. The phone in the ring or the phone? In the ring. That's just a mirror. Yeah, we've been in the ring. So, uh, no, that was great. I'm looking forward to um, talking with their client tomorrow. It should be enlightening as far as that goes, but they do a whole bunch of things. Um, you know, I guess the thing that I was thinking about is, you know, our background is all from Iowa. I spent a little time in Wisconsin and Minnesota and that, and, you know, urban for me was, you know, like Madison or Norman, Oklahoma when we lived there. So, um, the density of New York and Brooklyn and the Bronx and, you know, all that is just such a, you know, I've certainly visited and been there, but not for very extended periods of time. So I just, uh, life there and her ability to share that with us, I thought was really Really helpful. So anyway, so glad we had a chance to share those stories and look at some of those issues. And for you? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's really interesting. I'm so glad that we're doing this and following the schedule and looking at different teams and different communities because one community's challenges, you know, strengths and challenges are so different than what we grew up in. Yeah. Um, we were homeschooled. George and I were on a farm for most of our lives. So, <laughs> so to think yeah. about like, like I, I can't relate to that. And you know, it's, it helps me a lot to hear these stories and to hear these, like actually have a conversation with someone because, um, yeah, the whole Wi-Fi thing really just got me. Well, and I, I really appreciate, so it just really, you know, when she talks about a luxury and or a privilege, just, oh my gosh. you know, appreciating that, you know, there's to a wake great, wake up and get to be creative. Yeah. So we're <laughs> kind of Pearl Jam fans here, but there's a great line in one of the Pearl Jams and I'll probably say it m- multiple times on that, but you know, born on third body, hit a triple, um, you know, that's kind of, you know, I've hopefully, I realize I was born on third. I didn't actually hit the triple. I just landed there. And so I feel like I've really accomplished a lot. And I just, I think it's a great recognition of just, you know, in certain settings, um, how advantageous, you know, our, our family backgrounds and those kind of things are and how difficult it is to overcome some of those things. And not that people haven't and not that they can't. And, you know, you have to if that's where you're at. But at the same time, noting that there are some structural issues that make some things difficult. So anyway, good for, good for all of us there a little bit. So, okay, signing off. And then, uh, well, up next then is uh, we'll be interviewing a client and we'll come right back to you after these important messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Go check this one more time. Okay, she's going to take a look there while she's doing that. So uh, we have uh, very privileged and blessed to have on today, uh, Owen McLeod. So thank you very much for being here. Before we get started, just no one. Problem. It's a pleasure. Okay, um, as we're getting going, I just want to confirm that we've talked about it that we're going to record this session. It's going to be part of the Hidden Pearls podcast, and we're going to be broadcasting it Spotify, Apple, and YouTube channel. And you know that, and you're okay with that. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Very good. Okay. So co-host Emma here. So we're going to get get, stoned, get going. And so thank you very much for being here. All right, Hidden Pearls podcast listeners. 
Uh, today we have with us Owen McLeod. He has the perspective of a client and as a staff. Uh, before joining the BCS staff as activity specialist, he was a client and attended the Brooklyn High School for Leadership and Community Development. So very excited that we have both perspectives today. Yeah, very good. So, and just, uh, they gave us a bio, and so I'm going to kind of run through that, and then we'll get into it a little bit more. So, uh, very talented boxer. So, we talked a little bit about that before we got on. So, uh, considering turning pro, and he's going to talk a little bit more about his boxing career and how that helped him. Uh, reports being bullied and getting into fights at the middle school. Uh, and one day, he was researching self-defense techniques and saw boxing videos and was interested. And one of the teachers saw him carrying around a book about boxing and then introduced him to a boxing coach. So we'll come back to that story. So very cool there. So he's kind of found a way into sports and that, uh, and describes that as a pivotal turning point in his life. Uh, He and his mom immigrated to the United States from Jamaica when you were 12 years old and describes that transition as very difficult, uh, but also says that the place they left behind had no hope. So we can chat a little bit about that. Wayne also had a sense of personal style and liked to wear suits to school, always looking good in the styles. Uh, but that didn't go over very good with some of the classmates in New York. And uh, all those teachers, I bet they really did appreciate that. So uh, also, when you first got here, had a bit of an accent, and that contributed to being a victim of bullying at the school. So in response to all that, I had some anger issues. I used to react to everything, got upset, and boxing helped me a lot. It disciplined me. I think every kid should learn self-defense, not to beat up on people, but to be able to control yourself. So very wise words there. And again, we want to talk about some of the boxing stuff. Uh, Your mom eventually got worried that you were not having a very good experience in the school you you were at. She found the Brooklyn High School for Leadership and Community Development online. And that is a joint venture with the New York City Department of Education uh, and BCS, which is our agency. And we just heard from Janelle, so that was great. Um, so you transferred in and uh, undercredited youth in the ages of 16 to 21, and um, she got you into school and you went through, and then I understand you graduated in June of th- 2019. So congratulations on graduation. Thank you, man. And appreciate then, it. And then we're going to get updated on what you've been doing since then. And and as Emma said at the beginning, um, Wayne also is now employed with BCS, and so he's going to talk a little bit about his life with that. So Hand it back to Emma, and we can kind of, we'll get going. So thank you so much for being with us and taking no this problem, time. No problem, man. It's my pleasure, man. Okay. Um, yeah, so earlier on the podcast, we recorded this yesterday, uh, Janelle's interview, but we had a great conversation with Janelle and learned a ton about BCS and all the different programs mm-hmm. and how you really, really serve the community. Um, so we understand that you are a graduate of the high school, as we just said. Um, when did you first enroll there? Um, I enrolled, I enrolled in um 2015, but um before I enrolled there, I was in a different school. Yeah. Can so I had my freshman year in that school. And that's with the and suits then, and everything. Yeah. After that incident happened in my freshman year, that's when I enrolled to uh, Brooklyn Community Services School. Right. Brooklyn Leadership. And so when was it that you started to find boxing and like what was? Can you talk about that process? Um, I started at the age of 16 when I was in middle school, but uh, do you want to know like the whole incident that happened and what caused me to start it? Yeah. Yeah. Loved it. Right, yeah. So what happened was um, when I migrated to, when I migrated to the stage from Jamaica, it was like really difficult for me to like get accustomed to everything with, which is, was a language and just society in general. So um, it's like to certain the people I wasn't, I wasn't really what they wanted me to be because of how I was raised in my country. So I couldn't really understand the words. Like I couldn't really understand specific words that like Americans would say, you know, like like high level languages because my education level wasn't up there like that because in Jamaica I had to, I didn't have it like that. My family didn't have it like that. So when I came here, it just a whole new society to me. I had to deal with bullies, bullying every day where like I would be in class and like I'd be trying to answer questions that the teacher may ask me and they would just make fun of me because I would give them the wrong answer. So it's like that that was one of the reasons why. And then like it got worse, like everybody think they could just walk all over me, you know. So it was one day where it was this one specific kid that was picking on me. After school, 
I saw his dad and I told his dad, um, I want to fight your son. You know, I said, I want to fight your son. And then he said, you want to fight my son? And I said, yes, I want to fight your son. And then um, we got into it. And then um, during the fight, he caught me and I caught him. So it was technically even. And um, that same day I went home and I did push-ups. I was just trying to work out. I didn't know nothing about fighting. I was just like trying to watch videos and, you know, the, just like trying to get to it, you know? So, and then I realized that I was really like into it. Like I really wanted to do it. Like, and then I actually, I was looking up gyms and I walked to, I, um, I found this gym called Church Street Boxing Gym. And then I went to that gym for a class, a 30, a 30 minute class. And then, um, after the class, I was like, wow, like, this is where I need to be. You know, like, this is what I like to do. And then I kept going for, like, three, four more times. And then I asked, like, the owner of the gym, like, do you have any trainers that you could put me on to? And then um, he told me this. He told me about this dude named John, which is my trainer today. Yeah. Um, he told me about this dude named John. And, like, I got his number and everything, and I called him. And he told me that to come by the gym the next day. And I went there and it was like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to like learn how to box or do you want to like compete, you know? And I told him I want to compete. Like I want to fight. Like this is what I want to do, you know? And then ever since that day, I just been training with him. And like every day we just been grinding, grinding, grinding. And the crazy thing about boxing is that like once you get to know it, it's like, Nobody messes with you. It's like, you don't want to go around bullying. Like, I'm the type of dude, I don't go around picking fights for anybody, you know? I'm a really humble dude. But knowing that skill and knowing what you're capable of shouldn't even give you a reason to, like, go out and just try to fight somebody, you know? That's not cool anyways, you know? But I'm at a point in my career now where it's like, I'm really disciplined. So, like, even if I'm in, like, an altercation with anyone... Like, I always think twice before I even react to that. But before I started boxing, it was like, I was just so quick to react, you know? Like, I was just, right. like, I wanted to do something right away. Like, but I've been through many incidents and altercations with different people ever since I started boxing. And it gave me a lot of patience. It taught me how to deal with people. It just taught me a lot. Discipline, patience, and how to give back, you know? Um, Right now, I'm working with um, Brooklyn Community Services, and I train kids how to fight, you know? Like, I train them how to box. Like, it's not to be violent, but, like, to understand discipline, you know? Yeah. Because... Well, let, let me ask you a couple of questions there, because yeah. you've covered a lot of ground there. So that's great. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing that. So um, my work, I work with athletes on mental preparation, kind of visualization and affirmations and all that kind of stuff. And so in our world, some of the things that you're talking about really resonate with me. So one of the things the disciplines of sport can teach us is this notion about mindfulness. And so it sounds like you've had, so early days before boxing, you obviously had some anger or whatever, tired of being bullied. And so when people, things would happen, you'd immediately kind of react to it and things didn't turn out as well as you'd like. But with boxing, you've developed kind of a discipline and an internal awareness where somebody comes up and they're kind of going with stuff. You're not feeling panicked or pushed to jump into anything. You kind of take a deep breath. You can kind of try to work through it and see where things are going. So that's, that's a very, very, and like kind of everybody spends their whole yeah. life trying to work on that, that notion of mindfulness. So kudos to you. So that's, that's great. We had a famous president a long time ago. He always talked about, cause you talked about being humble. So it's great. Cause when you have those skills, you don't feel like you have to show them off. You know exactly. you have them, and you have the confidence. Right. But yet you don't have to be flaring it out. You know, so it's like yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So he, this president, he always talked about you know speak softly but carry a big stick. You know, it's like you know be prepared to go to fight if you have to. But like yeah, you definitely. But you don't have to lead okay. with that. You know what I mean? Exactly. We, we 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 want to get along with people, get our work done, do kind of things, and so exactly. that, that's really cool. So I appreciate you sharing kind of that mindfulness and the role that boxing has had in your life. No problem, and, man. Then you got some people okay. that um that just do it just just to beat on other people, which is not cool at all. And I never respect somebody like that, you know? Right. Yeah. Because you having a skill and you want to use that against people that that doesn't have that skill, that's just so unfair and it's never cool. And you yeah. know, I'm like. 
I would never respect somebody that does that. Yeah. So. Well, the world feels violent enough the way it is. And so we, you know, yeah. it's good to have some peacemakers that have skills though. So that's good. So anyway, so I kind of jumped yeah. in and where well, are you? Great. There? It's great. Um, well, yeah, I mean, only last comment on that is I think it's, I feel like the more that you know your own power, the more that you can stand in your power and you can use it in, it's just that, that control, the kind of that idea of this extra energy and power and you can direct it either into someone else or into your career, into your dreams. And, yeah. um, right, right. yeah, I think it's really cool that you're teaching that at BCS and empowering, like literally physically empowering definitely, people definitely. to feel yeah. their bodies. And, um, I mean, and even like, cause I teach yoga and the other side of what we do is yoga and it's a different sort of meditation, but I have a lot of yeah. friends who box and who are into MMA and fighting and they explain that same sort of flow state where you just kind of get into it and you can transition and then everything just kind of flows together. So, um, just respond. You guys do yoga. That's really dope. That's cool. I always yeah. wanted to do it, though, but I never really got the chance to, but it's really dope. It clears your mind, you know, yeah. it yeah. frees everything. Like I really be interested in doing that. Well, we have some videos, so I'll send them to you after. We're yeah. Done. So right. on our other website, she'll send them to you. So yeah, we've got actually, some, we got some 15 minute ones up there that you could at least give it a try. So what I, you know, I wanted to ask is, um, so it sounds like, I don't want to call it like you had anger issues, but it sounded like you, you know, got pushed, your buttons could get pushed a little bit and you got upset when you transitioned over to uh, the new high school with the BCS high school. Um, what other, were there other things going on in your life that made, you know, being in school difficult? So it sounds like you were getting bullied that you were trying to participate in classes um, and then the language issues. So were there other things though, that were, you know, not happening? Um, yeah. You? Um, and that goes back to like, um, Bullying, you know, it goes back to where I feel like people would try to like disrespect me and just look at me as I'm different or I'm not good enough, you know. So like all that pain and everything that that's been happening in my life, right. like all that pain from going up in Jamaica, like not having it like that and just like have to like go go out and get what you want, you know. Like everything it just boils up in one, and I'm the type of person that like. I don't really express myself to people. So I would just hold things in and just hold it in and hold it in and just like let it all out one day, you know? Right. So, um, so yeah, that definitely had a big impact on, on, um, being in high school and because I was so feared of that happening again, you know, like I grew out of that. So it's like, I wanted to like keep my guard up and make sure that nobody else in there could walk all over me like that again, you know? Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, I wanted to ask just, well then, so when you went to, got to the new high school, um, the leadership community development school with BCS, um, how, how was that environment different and how did it help you make that transition? Cause I, I know that you said boxing, but it sounds like the environment there at the high school was and really like the environment in, in that, in, um, Brooklyn community service, I mean, Brooklyn leadership, Forum, it was just like, it was amazing. Like the teachers, teachers was amazing it's like you went to school with family you know like they all treat you with respect they all want to make sure you do the right thing they all want to be they all want to push you to be great you know and i could honestly say that if it wasn't for them if it wasn't for them and the support that i've got in that school i probably wouldn't be able to graduate you know so like um the atmosphere and just like being around motivation and being around people that actually care about you because the school before that, previous before that, was just like, you're just going to school. It wasn't really much people that cared about you. You're just going to school, showing up every day with lack of support, you know? Mm -hmm. So being able to have that support like I had in Brooklyn Leadership, it really motivated me to, like, just be great because I never really um, had anyone that supported me like that except for my mom and my family. So, like, being around that, energy was just like amazing you know like they pushed me every day be days i'm in class on my phone like busy on my phone texting and my teachers be like put that phone down put that phone down constantly tell me put that phone down you know like they want you to be great you know like they want you to be great actually and they're not just there for a paycheck they want to make sure that you graduate and when i did end up graduating they was crying you know like <laughs> that made that that had me crying too on the inside because like right. y'all yeah, really care about me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just here for a paycheck. I'm not just here 
to do y'all job. Y'all here to actually do what's right, like to change people's lives and better themselves, you know? So, yeah, it's a great school, man. I recommend anybody to that school. Okay. All right. So after graduation, did you start, like, getting involved with working with the school while you were still in school, or was that something that happened after you graduated? Um, So while I was in school, I had an internship, which was the same company, Booking Community Service. On my internship I was doing, it's called, um, what you call, it's called Learning to Work Program. Mm -hmm. Basically, they send you to um, a site, which is okay, and they pay you for working there. So like that helped me a lot. Um, but when I actually graduated from the school, I felt like it was only right to just give back to that community, you know, just give back to everybody, you know, just because they've done a lot of good stuff for me. So why not give back to the community, you know? So I only felt it was right and I just, I worked there and right now we give them back to the community. We also have um, on food distribution where we go to neighborhoods and we, uh hand them food, you know, like we give out food, we give out mask, we give out everything, you know, for the, for the um, neighborhood. So. Okay. It's only right, man, just to give back and seeing the smile on people's faces, you know, like it means a lot to me, you know, it yeah. means a lot. To me. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's a great thing that, you know, they've been able to kind of create that opportunity and that you guys have such a great partnership with that. Um, so just kind of summarizing the school piece so kind of heard that the transition in, so you had a group of staff and other people, you know, you had other students who were motivated to be there. You had staff who really cared about you. Then you knew that they cared about you, really wanted you to graduate and interacted and supported you throughout that. So you had then it was like almost all four years of high school at the, at the new high school, at the leadership. Or repeat that, please. I couldn't really hear you. Yeah. Sorry. So, well, I was just trying to, how many years did you actually go to school at the um, Brooklyn? Five. Okay, so you had five uh, years. Okay. Well, in total, from my whole um, high school year was five years. Okay. But I had to do an extra year when I um when I uh, enrolled in that school. I had to do an extra year because I only earned three credits my freshman year. Ah, you know? so a little undercredited. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. But the environment there kind of helped you feel at home. The bullying stopped. You found boxing somewhere in there as well, so you had kind of a focal point. And then the staff was able to help and support you get through. And next thing you know, you graduated in 2019. So, all right. Excellent. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Ahead. You want to tell us a little bit about what you do? So you're an activity specialist. Um, yeah, I'm so an what's your specialist. Um, I create different activities for kids. Um, I help them with their homework. Um, I motivate them to be disciplined, you know, um, we do a lot, you know, we, we try our best to make sure that we educate. We're, we're not teachers, but we're, we're technically, yeah, we just like, we're not teachers, but we just like, how could I explain? It? I'll just say this, like, we just, um, motivate them, discipline them, um, everything, a, um, role model is supposed to be, you know, like we, we just like, want the best for them we we make sure that they're on top of their work and it's not only child care we make sure that the next generation because they're the next generation you know so we make sure that they have everything they need to move on and be mature and growing up and understand what life is you know so we're we're their role models we we set example for them we do everything in our power to make sure that they become successful, you know? A job that a teacher would be, but like I said, we're not technically a teacher, we're activity specialists, but we strive for our best, you know? We make sure that we do what we gotta do and at the end of the day, they become the person we want them to be. Yes. What, uh, what age group do you work with? Um, Six to 12. That's fun. Nice. So not certified teachers, but still teaching. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's really good. You you said something in there about you're teaching them what life is. And right. What, what would you if I asked you what life is, you know, what what would you like what's the the meat on the bones there? Like what what are the components um, when you when you teach a young person like that kind of some of the elements that you think are important in life? What what are what are some of those things? All right, so what I would say is um when it comes to life, 
you have to work hard for what you want. You have to be consistent with what you want to do. And I'll um, also let them understand that you cannot give up, you know, like whatever the situation is, you always want to keep going. You don't want to give up. You don't want to quit. And I feel like it's only right to keep having that mindset and giving them having that mindset and just keep constantly reminding them that whatever situation you went in, you are going through in life, never give up on your dreams. You know, like always keep going, always keep going. And just like, if there's any incident where they would come up to me, like, um, Mr. Wayne, um, I feel like this isn't working. Like, I feel like I need to quit. You know, I would just motivate them and do, give them a whole speech and why not to quit, you know? Yeah. And so they could just keep going and stay in that mindset it's and a, like working hard for whatever you want. Like that's what life is. It, it's a little bit like boxing in that way. Right. I mean, you don't, cause sometimes you have a tough round, right. And you're hurting in between, but when that bell yeah. goes off for the next round, if you can just get up and get back in the ring, then you got a chance. And so it's and just, boxing told me that, you know, boxing yeah. told me everything I know now, like not to give up because I lost my first two fights. My first two fights I lost. My second one I lost, I was going to quit boxing, you know? Yeah. But because I had positive people around me, good friends, that told me not to quit, just keep going, you know? like, And, like, I had to take time off to think for myself and actually think what I really want to do. So I went back in the gym. I worked hard. You know, yep. and I won every fight ever since. Like I won belts, I won everything, you know, and that sometimes I give them that story to yeah. show them an example of what not giving up looks like, you know, because yeah. it's always a blessing at the end. Well, and you know, Owen, that's what you've talked about is so important because like people get so paranoid or fearful of failure, you know, like, and so we go and we try something new because you were new at boxing. And so your first two bouts and so you don't win. Well, Right. Not, not really that, you know, I mean, that happens. Okay. So what right. does that mean? You can't be a great boxer? Of course exactly. not. And you've already shown that. And so if we can help people understand that failure is just, it's like a foundational piece. You yeah. Gotta, fa- you, failure is, failure is one of the most important things, you, you know, you, because you, you could win all you want. You could win everything you want, but you would never understand what it feels like to lose something and have to start all over again. When you have that determination, when you lose that, when you have that, nobody can't beat that. You know, like yeah. you, you're going to accept your losers, your losses, just like you accept your wins, yep. you know? Yep. So it's always a lesson. It's never a loss. Right. I so, just heard this quote and it said, every master is, it was a disaster or like every master started as a disaster. Yeah. And you know, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And those that beat me, like I'll, I'll beat them in rematches, you know, like, go. because I worked, I worked hard you know i worked hard for what i wanted and i either go all in or just not do it at all and yeah. that's the decision i had to make what i really wanted to do okay. and i went all out and just like can't nobody mess with me there like, you're going. Ah. All right. i like it all right well good well um let me just um you know in your employment with bcs and the work that you're doing in, in that role so you're working with those young younger kids um, are there any kind of kind of chronic issues or, you know, things that you're seeing with those young people that you're working with, you know, kind of from a, like a big picture perspective? I mean, is there something, you know, things that go on that really challenge young people in that category that make life difficult? Um, sometimes I would look on their faces and I just know like they're going through stuff, either, either it's at home or school, okay. you know, and I could just tell like they're going through some stuff. Um, Cause as a kid, you're not supposed to look depressed supposed to be happy you know right. so like sometimes yeah. it's just like i'll be seeing it on their faces and i just be trying to talk to them like is everything all right but you know sometimes it's kind of personal so they don't they don't really feel comfortable telling talking so i just like let them know like i'm always here if you need my support you know or if it's a really big issue i would just bring it up to my my boss you know okay and let him know like you need to put an eye on this but um but that definitely has a big impact on like living at home and being around certain type of energy and people, you know? Right. Surrounding yourself with positive people that are all trying to get somewhere and have goals and focused and those kind of things. All right. So for our audience, who's watching this, what would, do you have any requests or suggestions to them? I mean, how, how could people help 
the people in Brooklyn and or BCS and the work that you guys are doing. So what are some things that you might recommend to people if they're interested and want to try to reach out and help? Um, I would recommend that people like um, check out, check out um, what BCS is about because BCS has a lot of great offers, you know, like it's life changing, you know, um, it's just a lot that they have a lot of opportunities, you know, a lot, like a lot. And it's like a lot of people don't really know about it, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that if they do get to know about it, they will spread the word, you know, like make sure that because like it's a lot that we offer, you know, we give back to the community. And like, like a week ago, we had food distribution and like a lot of people came, but we had a lot of food left. You know, for example, like if people, if more people knew about it, they could came and grab some food, you know, and like, you know, yep. you know what I'm yeah. saying? So like, yeah. I feel like just to put the word out there about BCS and how and what we do as a community would definitely like help change, change the world, you know, like change people's lives and yeah, man, like it's a lot to offer. Okay. Yeah, we did that because we had that conversation um, with Janelle and so it's a very expansive program BCS runs and they do a great job with it so well very good um, let's see okay I guess that's kind of where we're at so good luck with you all your job and then do you uh, what, what do you have plans for the future I know you're going to box and then stay at BCS and then are you thinking about doing anything else where, where's the path for a one a Wayne th- taking you now um well I'm thinking about turning pro late um in the middle of 2021 so if all goes well, you know, I'll just continue to train and keep working hard and just like always remain focused and always help those in need and always motivate people that want to be great, you know, okay. and also people that feel like also for people that has talent, but they don't know that, you know, sometimes you need somebody to talk to you and let you know how much your worth is, you know, because you could be really talented and you've got all these negative energy around you saying you will never be anything. I've experienced that, you know, so you will never be anything and just drag you down in the gutter with them. So like I will continue to do what I do and just help the community and help change people's lives. You know, like I enjoy doing that. You know what I mean? It feels good. It makes me feel good inside that somebody actually took my advice and want to change their life. You know, right. it's powerful. It's really powerful, man. And, and you're right about that, though, helping people move into a positive energy flow have a positive outlook, believe in themselves, you know, and kind of drop all that negativity. It's just the world's the limit, you know, if people can just have a little bit of help and uh, kind of get started. So, well, congratulations with all your success. We wish you the very best as you move into that professional career. We'll be watching for you and uh, you we'll, uh, we'll get information from you. We'll email you later and get all the Instagram and get all that hooked up and we'll put all that all stuff right. in the notes. So we're very grateful that you took time to kind of talk with us today and explain how you got here and all those kind of pieces in the high school. So great job. And Emma, anything else? Um, I guess my thing is, uh, I think it's so cool how you've expressed that boxing gave you a vision and how, I mean, I think having a vision, it opens your eyes to how much bigger the world can be and it helps you to dream bigger, to reach out to people in bigger ways. And so to take that gift and then give it back is, sure, yeah. It's really, really special. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for talking to us. Um, when's your next fight? Um, Hopefully November 12th. All right. Okay. We'll follow up with you and All check right. it out. It's coming so, right up. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. 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 Um, Whoever is watching this, like whatever your dream is, whatever your passion is, like keep going, keep shopping. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be negative people trying to bring you down. Just erase it out your head. Keep focused and focus on what you want to do. Follow your heart. You know what I'm saying? Follow what you want to do and just keep working hard and never give up. You know what I mean? Never give up. Keep going. Keep shopping for greatness. All right. Well, that'll wrap us up here because wow. that's, that's the I message mean, what we're giving. So, all right, man. <laughs> that's great. All right. We appreciate it. So never give up. Never surrender. Right? Talking to you guys, man. Take care. Be safe. All right. You take care, Thank man. You so Thank much. you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Peace. All right. Wow. Okay, then. Oh, that was pretty good. Wow. Really motivated Quite. young man. And 
just a great story about, you know, just getting in the right situation and kind of between boxing and the high school and the new people and staff that believed in him and gave him a chance. And um, also this, the power of bullying, huh? I mean, we, we read and hear about it all the time and just how negative that is and how painful it is. So. Okay. Yeah. That, and I think uh, it's so interesting because like football is such a team sport Right. And so, uh, you know, like as he's talking about like being great, have a vision, I like, I look on this wall behind us and I feel like this, like this is one of, one of my favorite rooms in our house, obviously, because it's a podcast studio now, but yeah. also because it's like jerseys and stories and connections of greatness in this room. And it's like everybody who has gone all in on their dreams and gone in a hundred percent. And I think it's, it's so cool to see that in a different or somebody like going all in and in in the trenches and in that piece where they're working and grinding and you know about to go pro so he's kind yeah. of at this massive tipping point and massive tipping point so so very okay. cool okay well good to have a team around you yeah. even in an individual sport all right so that'll um, just wrap up episode two of the hidden pearls podcast with bruce kittle and emma kittle emma so kittle? we appreciate you guys watching and hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll be reloading for episode three, and you can be looking for us then. So thanks for, thanks we got a lot in episode three already planned for y'all. We got a lot. It's going to be an exciting episode. So yeah. So stay tuned. Go Niners. Stay safe. All right, man. Vote. So, yep. Yeah. Go, 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 go. Register and vote. Coming up. All, All right. right. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Cut. <laughs>